What's good, everybody? Currently on the road. I feel like it's making it's making some content. I, uh, reflecting a lot on life. I, uh, I don't know. Anybody kind of when they're overwhelmed, uh, they feel like they're dealing with a lot. Cause it might just be me. I'm gonna go ahead and clarify this right now. It might just be me. But anybody else like? Emotions kind of everywhere. Anybody else like revert back to like a childlike state and like think about the, the last time they felt? Um, think about how the last time they felt when they were overwhelmed. What I mean, like revert back to a childlike state, like when I'm going through something for some odd reason, like think about my childhood and my teenage years. Like what I, what I did when I was in a panic, uh, what I did when I was scared, what I did when I was upset, you know. And I look at some of the examples I got. Um, I think back to some of the examples I got when I saw adults either scared, sad, or upset. I don't know. I don't think I. I don't think I had the best examples when it came to um, mental resiliency when you're faced with uh, setbacks. Like I, and it's it's the truth, but I don't I don't um I don't react in the most ma in, uh, mature way. When I'm faced with a setback, when I'm when I'm faced with stress, when I'm faced with I I I lash out, I cuss, I uh yeah. I'm not gonna say whose example I followed, but I came up I came up around that a lot growing up. When something, when something didn't either go my way or a setback happened, I just went from, or the things I've seen, I've seen people go from zero to ten. As I got older, you know, and started to socialize more, I recognized and I learned knowledge through pain, but I learned that's not how you really handle and deal with stressful situations you, you're not why in the fuck is you throwing a temper tantrum for my bad y'all this might be a part one to part two because I got my GPS on and I'm not on the highway as of yet but I'm gonna try to make this video at least 10 minutes but yeah I uh I wasn't given the best example to handle stress I'm stressed out right now and I'm just as I'm on the road, I really don't want to be left alone with these thoughts. I'm heading to a to a gym uh, and at a another in another city, and I got an interview set up. So honestly, I can't wait for both. But like everybody, we all got problems. I got problems, military life. I got problems, personal life, and it's just I really don't know how to juggle between the two and stress management and that bothers me a lot actually um, a lot of mannerisms that I learned and how to conduct myself as a man or as a male if that makes sense I honest to God did not learn until I joined the military and I'll tell you right now I feel like the military is the worst place for any boy becoming a man to learn how to conduct himself as a man. You'll, you'll, you'll be naive to a lot of things, you know. So there were a lot of things that I was really naive to, especially when it came down to what people consider 
respect and disrespect. But anyway, just that's another. But I, I, I'm really jealous of people who know how to handle stress. In half a mile, turn left onto McKinney Parkway. Gotcha. The GPS is going, y'all. So forgive me. But oh wait, did it? Oh yeah, no, it's still going. Um, yeah, I'm really jealous of people who know how to handle stressful situations like really, really well, especially when they feel like their time is being taken from them. They, they turn know. left onto McKinney Parkway. I can't see the GPS because I'm recording on, so taking a leap of faith. Why is it making me take the back route? It is beyond me. But yeah, like I look at people and how they take losses or L's is kind of like, I know if I was in their shoes, I'd be breaking something, I'd be cussing, I'd be fussing, I'd be yelling, I would be legit spazzing out, you know? And then I realized like, he knows how to, well, he or she knows how to take an L or knows how to handle the setback. Continue on McKinney Parkway for three quarters of a mile. Oh, Lord Jesus, this is going to get on my nerves. Like, right now, I feel like I'm about to get frustrated. But we'll see. I may have to turn this video off and post another one. We'll see. But, yeah. I don't... And me, I'm not the type... Well, I feel like I, I sought out mentorship late, if that makes sense. Again, I didn't know... Yeah. The cop, my concept of right and wrong kind of shifted and changed when I became an adult. Certain things I learned that was right really wasn't right. Certain things I learned wrong really wasn't wrong. Social norms, you know. Um, In a quarter mile, turn left onto US 401 North. Gotcha. Y'all really can't multitask, like, to save my life. So y'all just bear with me. I know this video is probably going to be, like, all over the place when I post it. I'm driving and making... At the light, turn left onto US 401 North. But, yeah, I... Talking about it helps. Outside of my council, I really don't go to people with no problems. That is also probably a very... That's a big problem. Coming up, I really, coming up, when I asked for help, I, I feel. Continue on US 401 North for nine miles. Gotcha. All right, got you. I got nine minutes of me still rambling. But growing up, when I asked for help or when I felt like I asked for help, for help I didn't get it. Now, mind you, I'm blessed, y'all. I grew up, I, I could be worse off, you know, with how I grew up. Honest to God, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't grow up to be a serial killer. I ain't gonna hold you. But nah, um, um, I don't know. It's, it's like, when I'm faced with a problem, I'm in torment, to me. When I wanna seek and ask for help, I'm in torment. Like, it's harder for me to, for me, it's harder for me to reach out and tell someone I need help. But also, too, and I had to learn this is not the case, but I feel like people legitimately, they be foul. They mean you no good. You know, um, a lot of people, my lens, my eyes, a lot of people don't want to help you. They just, if anything, a lot of people are glad they're not in your situation. They want to talk about you. They want to have something to talk about, you know, your problem. And the only reason I say that, growing up, I learned to stop doing this shit as an adult. I'm sorry, y'all. But I was talked about child, teenager, 
would talk about memory lane. Child, teenager, young adult. I was talked about more when I had problems, when I did reach out for help. You know? Um, and I don't think I was a problem person. I don't think I was. But the less problems I had, people stopped talking. And and what made it so funny, it's more so family members than friends or anything. People people talk about you not even know you. <laughs> but I noticed just with family, and I'm not shitting on my family when I say this, people would much around much rather sit around a break bread, sit around a circle, and talk about your downfalls than your success and certain things that you have come well unless you're their parent then that's bragging rights I got parent issues y'all so forgive me but I feel like that same concept kind of applies to people as well like one thing I kind of peeped like this is something I learned in the military but it, it's kind of like and it may not be necessarily talking about you but people will talk about your situation and what I've noticed, people don't come up with solutions. I've heard people say, hey, I sure would hate for that to be me. But it's kind of like, and then too, I, as I'm getting older, I've also learned people like to talk to men and all that. No, I'm, I'm always, if I talk about a problem, I want a solution. I want a fix. And if you have a really good fix for me, I will follow it because it helps. But a lot of people, I don't, I will admit to an extent, depending on who you are talking to, it does help. But I feel like that's the reason why we have counselors, because again, it's kind of like, a counselor is, to me, a counselor, they have to be legit. Now, mind you, if they talk about your business, they don't say your name amongst other people because you know it's confidentiality and all that other stuff but the only time I've seen counselors talk about people they refer to them as patients and they go to other counselors like if whatever tools or guidelines they're trying to give us if you're in counseling they don't they're not going to go talk to it from what I know because again uh, the whole confidentiality thing and I'm pretty sure it, 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 it's anyway they talk about it amongst other counselors, but not amongst other people. A lot of people really, and this is just what I came up around, and what I what I think, and again, I'm not shitting on anybody. So whoever sees this, whether you're a friend or a family member, I'm not shitting on you when I say this, but I didn't, I didn't get counsel. I got gossip, if that makes sense. And it just, but bringing it back to me, it's kind of like, in situations like this, I really wish I had somebody for guidance-wise, outside of my counselor, but just because I only see, I see two different counselors, John. I only see them maybe once or twice out of the week. But I really wish I, I and I don't, with everything that I do have, I will say this, I do have a lot. Materialistic wise, but I, I'm all about energy. And one thing I've noticed about myself, I have a lot of bad energy on the inside of me, and I do my absolute best not to project that bad energy onto anyone, especially young kids and children. It just and only reason I, only reason I specify that the young kids and children I, I have nieces and nephews and a lot of youngins too but I don't a lot of people don't kind of recognize how that energy may affect them into their adult years it doesn't always have to be your mom your pops it could be an uncle it could be a best friend you came up with but I feel like projection and energy is real and a lot of people, man, look, listen, whatever practice you do, 
whether it's prayer, whether it's meditation, whether it is counseling, if you are not taught to get that energy out of you, and whatever form that is in, it stays with you. And that, to me, is very, very dangerous. It's very, very deadly to me if I'm keeping it a whole band. It's, it's, it's scary. It makes you illogical. It makes you irrational. It makes you hard to be around. I know I'm probably one of the most difficult people to be around. I will admit I require a lot, but to be fair, I give out a lot too. Keeping it a band. But yeah, I feels good talking about it. Hopefully somebody will watch this video and once they get past the negative aspect in the beginning, they'll get some good energy towards the end. But I don't know. I just felt the need to. I don't even know why I'm making this video. I just felt the need to get these thoughts out of me. You know? We're. I don't want to become all selfish and be like I'm going through a lot because when I sit down and talk to people outside of interviews, you got a lot of people fighting some. You got a lot of people fighting mental battles that probably. Everybody's going through something. And that also kind of bothers me too. It's kind of like... Who do you know that's not going through anything? The teenagers are going through. Even the kids are like... I say this and then I'm just... The fact that four and five year olds... And hopefully I don't get shadow banned for saying this on YouTube, but... I'm not going to say the word, but understand the concept of unaliving yourself at such a young age. I, To me, that's not normal. To me. I get that we all have traumatic experiences, but I feel like too many youngins understand the concept of death. And when I mean like too young, I'm talking... that's that is a problem but that's another topic anyway y'all be good I'm gonna de-stress at this gym I'm gonna make this content I'm gonna make have a great interview but I'm alright but I'm not alright that just, just bothers me it kinda makes me really just go and y'all, on some real shit, the mind fuck is, for me, the mind fuck is not coming from the big things, it's the little things right now. Every little thing is what's causing me to have these just, like, and then, once I make it past the little thing, it's like, right, it's like, ooh. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto Piney Grove Rawls Road. Anyway, y'all, y'all be safe out there. Like, subscribe. Please support the channel. Turn left onto Piney Grove Rawls Road. And I'll probably make another video tomorrow, alright? Y'all be good, y'all be good.